And uh, he was saying Israel needs to respond. And especially since Iran uh, fired these drones and missiles uh, and rockets from Iran territory, that they need to go exactly uh, and hit Iran territory itself. But we'll see what's going to happen in the next uh, 24, 48 hours. All right, George, I'll go to you next here. Uh, we talked last night. Obviously, this is unprecedented uh, situation. And uh, look, everyone's watching, as Chris said, to what the response will be. What's your take here? Yeah, I, I think uh, we were all sort of gearing up for this moment. Uh, the, the, the White House and the intelligence in the state, as well as uh, our Western allies were telecasting that this was going to happen. Not many people by surprise is the extent of uh, of, uh, of attack the, the attack by the Ira Iranian regime. Uh, last count was 186 drones, 36 uh, cruise missiles, 110 surface to surface uh, missiles, and the reporting from the IDF is that they managed to intercept 99 uh, percent of those. Again, that's unprecedented. It's the first time that Iran has done so directly from the Iranian regime has done so directly from their land for quite some time. They've been using these proxies that we've been reporting on extensively on CBN News. Uh, but I think going forward, I, I, I was talking to Chris Mitchell this morning uh, as he woke up and I said, what was the mood uh, mm. in Jerusalem and the sense that people were going about their their normal life. Uh, people were going to uh, to the to uh, you know enjoying Shabbat. They were out on the streets. Uh, but I think uh, you know there's a lot of all eyes are on Washington D.C. Uh, Biden is uh, getting together with the G7 leaders to uh, craft a response. Obviously, the Biden administration wants to cool the heels of the Israelis, tell them to calm down a little bit, look for a, a diplomatic uh, uh, solution going forward. Uh, clearly, Israel has a different calculus and how they respond. I think the, the good thing is that you know, they weren't uh, any casualties to, to, to speak of that we know of uh, right now. The damage was uh, very minimal. If you think about it, you know, 186 of these Shahed 136 drones, uh, I've seen them up close and personal in uh, in Ukraine, in the southern part of Ukraine. They do extensive damage uh, to infrastructure, water supply, the electrical grid. Uh, clearly, Israel, with the help of the United States, uh, Great Britain, uh, interestingly, Jordan as well, uh, got involved to to shoot down these incoming uh, projectiles. So, so uh, it'll be interesting to see the level of uh, uh, response. Uh, by Benjamin Netanyahu, by Jerusalem uh, in the days, uh, uh, in the hours and days ahead. And Chuck, this was uh, an interesting, I mean, obviously unprecedented, as we said, but also interesting because it was clearly telegraphed. Um, and as you're, you, I think you called them on your stream, called them weed eaters in the air, these slow moving uh, buzzards going. And and so we had all, It's it was just weird. You had all this time for to figure out what to do. Uh, our warships were over there because of this advance notice and everything. So, um, so what did you make of that whole strategy and what Iran was hoping to get out of this whole thing? Sure. Well, I, it's about 1,300 miles from uh, Iran to Israel and they have to cross, obviously, across Iraq and Jordan or maybe Syria or Saudi Arabia in order to get there. And so uh, we obviously have been watching... Iran very closely, and so have the Israelis. And so they picked up the launches as soon as they happened. That gave them literally a few hours. I mean, that's a, the distance similar to be like flying from Vermont to Florida. Uh, and so uh, you think about you know how long it would take a plane to get there. These are a little bit faster than a plane, but not. Uh, and and uh, the the Shahed drones are much slower than a plane. Uh, these drones, uh, as as George said, they can create extensive damage, but they are. Uh, they're, they're actually more like a large artillery shell with wings uh, because they, they only have a 70 kilogram, I'm sorry, 35 kilogram warhead, which is about 75 pounds. And um, a warhead of that size would like destroy your house, but it's not going to destroy a city block. It might destroy a part of a, an apartment building, but not the, the whole building. Uh, and so they the, the thing about these drones is that they have so many of them and that they can direct them all at specific targets. However, Israel took measures immediately upon notifying, being notified of the launches 
uh, to scramble the GPS signals within their country, uh, inside of Israel. So if you were anywhere in northern Israel and you pulled up your phone, it would look like your map on your map. You're at the Beirut airport. If you pull, if you're in southern Israel, it would look like you're at the Cairo airport. That obviously made it much more difficult for these Shahed drones to hit their targets. And uh, as uh, is being reported, not one of those drones actually breached Israeli airspace. They were all shot down or landed on their own outside of Israeli airspace. Uh, the only things that made it into Israeli airspace were the the missiles and the rockets that were fired. Uh, and so these, uh, again, I, we, we talk about this amazing response to the, the attack last night. Uh, first of all, I think it bears pointing out that it wasn't just Iran that attacked last night. Uh, Hezbollah joined in, firing rockets out of Lebanon. Uh, the, the There were rockets fired out of Syria as well. And the Houthis, who can forget the Houthis, kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the, the axis of evil down there, that uh, is kind of like that really annoying little brother that just won't leave you alone, wants to play, and nobody pays attention to him. But uh, they fired some rockets as well. Um, all of those were dealt with on top of what Iran sent. Of course, uh, Israel has been uh, very handily dealing with attacks out of southern Lebanon from the Houthis and from Syria ever since October 7th. Uh, so they've got a lot of practice with that. But this, uh, this axis of evil on that side attacking Israel was countered not just by Israel and the United States and the UK, but the Jordanian Air Force rose to the challenge. The Jordanian air defenses were shooting down those drones as well as the Saudis. And that's that instant coalition of people in that region and, and countries that aren't, have not been uh, very friendly toward Israel, at least in their uh, handling of what they're doing in Gaza. Uh, so if Jordan, for example, has been very critical of Israel and what they've been doing in Gaza. But Jordan still rose and defended Israeli uh, against these these attacks from uh, Iran last night. And that is substantial. I mean, that that's notable. We should really uh, take note of that, because uh, to have Jordan and Saudi Arabia shooting down drones out of Iran, especially since Iran specifically threatened Jordan, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia and told them, if you do this, if you try to stop us, or if you allow Israeli aircraft into your airspace, we will consider you to be an enemy as well, and we will attack you. So it remains to be seen what Iran decides to do now that both Jordan and Saudi Arabia rose on the side of Israel in this conflict. And uh, this could definitely widen the conflict without a doubt. All right, if you're just joining us right now, uh, we welcome you into the CBN News channel and the CBN News app, as well as on YouTube. If you'd like to interact with us, go ahead over to the CBN News YouTube channel. We are monitoring the chat. If you guys have questions for uh, Chris and Chuck and George, just feel free to leave them in the chat. We'll try to get to them as best we can. So, Chris, I want to ask just for, I mean, a lot of Americans went to bed last night. We had this attack happened overnight there in Israel and then you know people that, that was evening here in the United States people went to bed what what's happened today what is what is the latest that we could fill people in on well last night uh, uh, Dan I was up in the Galilee and I was actually not too far from the Lebanese border up there you can hear planes almost constantly that are going into uh, into South Lebanon and hitting Hezbollah targets uh, came down here and you know during the night, there were several hours of anticipation because uh, the drones were on their way. Everybody, I would say many Israelis, stayed up quite late last night into the early morning hours anticipating this attack. And, uh, and thankfully, as we've noted, 99% of those uh, 300 drones, missiles, and rockets were shot down, many of them never coming into Israeli airspace. Uh, if you're here today in the streets of Jerusalem, it looks normal. Uh, I'm not sure it's a, it's a sense of normalcy, but it's really uh, not normal because we don't know what's going to be happening uh, pretty soon and uh, what kind of response 
uh, Israel will we, we'll have. I'll, I'll add to Chuck's comments about the, uh, uh, you know, how they've been able to do that. The Jordanians, the Saudis, uh, and, and really Benny Gantz, uh, the defense minister a few years ago, they really set up a four-tier uh, anti-missile defense system that's worked superbly last night. Not only the Iron Dome, but David Sling, the Arrow 3, uh, just an amazing demonstration of how they were able to protect Israel. And I also say that, uh, you know, Iranian, uh, Iran's taking a little hit in social media. I saw one thing that said these drones that took so long to get here, he said, uh, one of the things said, even Amazon orders arrive <laughs> faster than these drones. Uh, so Iran's getting a little bit of a, a taste of mockery on uh, on social media right now. But uh, but not to be taken lightly to what they what potentially they could do uh, in the future or if Hezbollah decides to get into this fray in a major way. But I would say to your question, Dan, it looks normal right now, but everybody's watching to see how Israel will respond, even while it seems the United States is trying to restrain uh, uh, Israel. And when I talked to Ambassador uh, Danone, he he said, you know, the United States, we appreciate their help, but uh, please don't help, don't restrain us from doing what we need to do to protect our country. Yeah, which is what they've been saying, you know, a lot uh, towards the attacks and uh, the response in Gaza saying, hey, ease back here. And we've been talking about that on these streams that uh, perhaps that emboldened Iran to want to take this step when they see that, well, we can go ahead and attack and then everyone's going to yell at Israel after that. George? going to say to Chris's point, I mean, it's really, uh, I mean, Israelis have to be uh, breathing a huge sigh of relief uh, today that uh, all of the assets that uh, Israel has deployed uh, to, 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 to shield itself uh, from a, a moment like this, that they've all sort of anticipated and expected, and it worked beautifully. I mean, 99% interception rate is is huge. Uh, now, obviously, the, the, the uh, Iranians, uh, I think the Iranians expected that that the Israelis, with the help of the United States and Great Britain, uh, would intercept these uh, Shahed drones uh, because of just how long they take. What's interesting, like, for example, in Ukraine, uh, the, the time frame was much different. Most of the Shahed 136 drones were being launched from Crimea, and it would only take a few minutes uh, to get to their target. In this case, it took several hours. So I think let's 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 not be naive. Let's let's pretty much expect that the Iranian regime expected that the Israelis would manage to shoot down all these 186 drones. That was pretty much a given. I think they were hoping that the surface-to-surface -surface, uh, missiles and the um, uh, and the other uh, you know missiles that they launched would particularly hit uh, the uh, the air base from which uh, uh, two weeks ago Israel launched its attacks against the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 consulate uh, in uh, in Damascus, Syria, and apparently it did sustain some some damage, nothing uh, of significance. They, according to the IDF, they're up and running. So I think, uh, you know, Iran can walk away saying, well, at least we hit, uh, we, you know, brought some damage to that particular facility. Uh, but again, it's, it, it's a, you know, Israelis are, are breathing a sigh of relief that, uh, that they're various uh, uh, security apparatus, the various missile defense systems that they have and they've been working on for quite some time worked beautifully. I am hearing also initial reporting from inside of Tehran that uh, Iranians are not too, they're not giddy. I'm sure you'll see some video uh, in the hours ahead, uh, maybe it on Al Jazeera and some of these other uh, uh, networks that play quite uh, uh, well in the in the Middle East. You'll see Iranians, uh, you know, handing out sweets and dancing and so forth. Uh, but uh, what I'm hearing from inside Iran, this is again not something that they want. They do not want to go to war uh, with uh, with Israel. It's the same sentiment that I saw two weeks ago, reporting from inside Hezbollah territory. In in South Lebanon. Uh, this is not what they want. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, street response, uh, how the street in Iran uh, uh, will will respond to the actions. Keep in mind, you guys know, Chris, Chuck, you guys know you've reported extensively uh, from this part of the world. Uh, you know, uh, you, in order to, re to respond, you've got to respond in a heavy hand. Uh, if you don't, you are considered uh, weak. Uh, and so this, this was something that Iran had to do. It was obviously surprising that they did it directly from their from their territory, but nonetheless, they had to in order to placate the domestic uh, anger 
uh, that clearly is there amongst a segment of the Iranian population. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think we need to be also very clear that uh, that most Iranians are not itching for a war uh, with Israel because they know it would be devastating. All right, so we got the statement here from the White House earlier on as this was unfolding last night. They really issued sort of a vague statement. Uh, I'll read part of it because it's a little bit of a lengthy statement. He says, this is uh, President Biden saying, I've just spoken with Prime Minister Netanyahu to reaffirm America's ironclad commitment to the security of Israel. I told him that Israel demonstrated a remarkable capacity to defend against and defeat even unprecedented attacks, sending a clear message to its foes that they cannot effectively threaten the security of Israel. And he talked about he's going to convene his fellow G7 leaders to coordinate a united diplomatic response to Iran's brazen attack. And they did, he did kind of insinuate as well that they didn't, they didn't want any part of any retaliation that, you know, because we talked, Chris, last night about how uh, Israel said they promised a strong response here. And Biden seemed to indicate they didn't want to be, take part in that response. We, we saw the threat from you know Iran, if that did happen, uh, so w what do you guys make of that threat, Chuck? Well, as far as a response goes, Israel has uh, several dozen uh, F-35 uh, dual-role combat fighters, and these are some of the most advanced uh, combat aircraft on planet Earth. They could very easily penetrate Iranian uh, air defense radar, uh, take out I Iranian. Uh, besides anything that they want uh, in there. They, there are about nine different mun munitions that those things can fire. The real question is how they get to Iran because, uh, again, it's about 1,300 miles uh, that they would have to travel. That is uh, within the range of these fighters. They could make it into Iran, but then they would need to refuel in order to get home. And so it might be possible that they... Uh, make it into Iran, drop their munitions, and then turn south and go into the Persian Gulf and would have to refuel. Uh, I, their refueling capability, though, is limited as far as Israel's uh, own refueling capability, and they might need to rely on American refuelers to do that. And uh, from what President Biden just said, if he says, we're not going to have any part in this, then that might be off the table. Uh, so the that we've heard some talk overnight about Israel considering a response with drones of their own. And so it just remains to be seen what they decide to do. The difference will be, I, if I had to predict, uh, that although Iran just aimed all of their munitions at Israel itself and probably hoping to create as many civilian casualties as possible, uh, that the Israelis are going to be a lot more choosy about the targets that they aim at inside Iran, they're going to aim for things that actually have a military value and mm -hmm. uh, or a strategic value like uh, nuclear uh, plants that would allow them to to advance their nuclear program, things like that. Uh, if, if nothing else, it'd be likely that they would uh, take out the factories that are producing these drones and missiles uh, inside mm -hmm. Iran. Without a doubt, Israel has a long list of targets that they would like to hit inside Iran that they've been watching very closely over some time. And this now gives them an excuse to do it. Guys, I wanted to get this question in here from the audience uh, from from username Boomer. It's a solid username, by the way. But the question is, could some drones uh, may, uh, may be unarmed or used to test different uh, defenses, even to deplete ammunition? So in other words, uh, did they potentially do this just to kind of get Israel to sit there and have to unload all all of these uh, munitions that they have here and maybe deplete them a little bit? What do you guys think of that uh, that question? Absolutely. That, that's absolutely what they were doing. That's the reason that they fired those in several waves is that they were hoping the first wave would deplete the resources of uh, the Iron Dome, the Aero system and David Sling and so on. And then the subsequent waves would be able to make it into Israel and actually cause some damage. Uh, but uh, what they, what what we actually saw was that uh, the uh, combat aircraft launched from Israel, the yep. United States, the UK, Jordan, et cetera, et cetera, 
took out virtually all of those drones before they even made it into Israeli airspace. And then the Iron Dome system was able to take out the cruise missiles, which are much larger. I mean, these cruise missiles are up to three feet in diameter. They're on the order of 10 times as much explosive, and they could do a lot more damage, and they move a lot faster. But without a doubt, uh, Israel's Iron Dome system is able to prioritize uh, and, and see the difference between a slow-moving weed eater in the sky, uh, or, you know, as they call them, uh, a flying Dorito in, in Ukraine. Um, <laughs> and and they're able to tell the difference between those and a 40-foot-long, three-foot-in-diameter rocket that's coming in from, from Iran and take out the more uh, dangerous ones first. In fact, uh, we saw footage last night from Jordan where one of those uh, – those uh, missiles was taken out over Jordan and fell in a residential neighborhood just outside of Amman, uh, causing a little bit of damage there. So uh, that it didn't quite work out the way that I think Iran hoped. Chris, George, you guys have any reaction to that? Go ahead, Chris. Okay, yeah, I was. I would add to that. You know, uh, certainly uh, Iran has to be disappointed in and how how re really by penetrating any of Israeli airspace, uh, at, least, at least with the drones. But I'm sure they're learning from this. And I was, in part, they wanted to find uh, the defenses of Israel, uh, probably much more robust than they expected, but, but it's not over. I mean, is, Iran is still manufacturing these drones, these ballistic missiles, uh, but a, an amazing, superb uh, demonstration by Israel and its allies in the region to defend against these, but I think uh, it, Iran's going to still try to penetrate uh, Israel in the future. Yeah, I was. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was going yep, to say, ahead, George. You know, I think uh, you know we was uh, talking last night, uh, Dan. Um, uh, you know, the, the concern that uh, even though the Houthis, the uh, the uh, Iranian proxies in Syria and Iraq and Hezbollah joined in, I think the big concern we had last night uh, was that uh, Hezbollah would go, uh, you know, absolutely unleash all that they have uh, simultaneously to time with these drones coming in. That was the big concern. And obviously, Israel is uh, breathing a sigh of relief. Thank goodness Hezbollah did not do that. Uh, and I think that, uh, that, that, that obviously is, is very, very comforting to Israel that Hezbollah did not, even though they fired off a few missiles uh, from, the, from the south, uh, but not to the extent that uh, they could have. And they chose not to, uh, to do that. And so I think uh, that's, uh, that's terrific. And obviously, for, for, you know, again, for Iran, they knew that these 186 drones were going to be coming. They knew the United States had assets in the Mediterranean, along with the Brits, the French, uh, you know, the Jordanians, the Saudis, even though they didn't expect them to get involved. Uh, but clearly 186, it sounds like a lot, uh, but uh, Israel has been preparing for this moment for a very, very long time. Uh, and clearly uh, they, they showed uh, their, uh, their, their class in the process of defending their, uh, their people. All right. And Chris, as you mentioned a few minutes ago that you had caught up with uh, Danny Danone. Uh, so, Crutch, if you're ready, I wanted to play. Uh, we got a clip of that uh, interview and we can expect to see that full interview on CBN News uh, in a little bit here. But let's let's take a look at what he had to say. Well, last night we saw our defense system in action. We are very proud of the capabilities of the results, but it's not enough. We have to show also our offensive capabilities in order to create deterrence in the region against Iran. They attacked a sovereign country uh, with 300 rockets, uh, missiles, and UAVs, and we cannot sit idly by. Uh, so we will have to calculate our next step. And my position is that we have to hit them hard to teach them a lesson that they will not do it again. All right, Chris, so that's that was your conversation there. What what can you uh, tell us about your conversation with him in addition to that uh, clip right there? I'm not hearing uh, Chris, by the way. Crutch. We've got no audio. Is the, is the audio silent on the feed as well? Well, Dan, can I can I chime in? 
Yeah, I didn't know if everyone else could. I didn't know if it was just me that couldn't hear Chris, but we, Chris, we couldn't hear you there uh, on your response. Go ahead, George. Yeah, no, those are those are strong words from Danny Danone. I mean, it's uh, you know, he's obviously telecasting that the that the Israelis want to have a forceful uh, response. Uh, again, I think uh, what what is going to perhaps uh, limit or hamstring the Israelis, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, is is from the White House, right? And and how much will the White House put pressure? on Israel to say, listen, you know, we had a 99% success rate with the help of the United States. Uh, you didn't have uh, anybody injured, I mean, uh, killed, no major devastation. Uh, so maybe we need to cool things down. Let's uh, let's talk a diplomatic uh, avenue uh, and not, uh, you know, do a tit for tat. Uh, and so I think that's what we're going to be anticipating uh, in the next few hours uh, as uh, the, the president meets with the G7. Uh, Chris, are you back online? No, he's not. No, not here. I don't know what happened to his audio. We lost Chris's audio here, so uh, unfortunately. But uh, uh, we'll work on getting that back here in just a second, Chris. Uh, but uh, Chuck, George, while we have you guys, I know we're going to wrap here in just a moment. But uh, let's get your final thoughts on where this thing goes from here. What What are your final thoughts on this whole thing uh, to leave people with here as we head into the rest of this weekend and heading and heading forward after this? Well, I, I just want to say that last night when we uh, we went live right after this uh, happened, as the rockets and drones were still flying toward Israel, uh, so before we knew what would actually take place, uh, we had 40,000 people online, I believe, and um, uh, we, we prayed all together, 40,000 people. That's a stadium's worth of people, uh, and, and we prayed that that this would happen, that God would spread his wings over Israel, that he would stop these drones, that he would allow them uh, to, none of them to penetrate the airspace of Israel, and that there would be no damage uh, and no lives destroyed. Uh, and I, I, I think that we have, that we would be remiss not to point out that this is a massive answer to that prayer. Yeah. Uh, and I just hope that uh, people in Israel can see it for what it is, that uh, yes, Israel's got this great technology, and yes, they've been preparing for this, but and uh, this is an unprecedented attack from Iran with hundreds and hundreds of rockets, and uh, I, obviously Iran was not expecting this outcome. Uh, this is a, a real uh, stain on their credibility with uh, everybody else that they're trying to sell these drones to. And so uh, this, uh, we, as we've prayed that God would thwart the plans of evil men, he came through last night and he answered our prayer. And that's a very significant thing that I think we can't forget. We also need to continue to pray as this goes on for wisdom for the leaders of Israel and that God would continue to stand by his people throughout this conflict. Amen. Uh, George? Yeah, that's excellent, Chuck. I think, you know, I think from having reported from inside Iran many years ago, uh, I think uh, Iran had no choice uh, but to respond and to respond in a way that would, uh, I think, for domestic purposes, uh, placate the fact that they that they, you know, that you, when you move these drones around, when you position your surface-to-surface -surface, uh, uh, um, uh, missiles and other missile technology, you better believe the United States and our allies in the region are watching every inch of uh, of, uh, of Iran. So we knew it. We the, the Biden administration had been telecasting this, just like they were preparing the world for the invasion of Russia of uh, of Ukraine back in 2023. We all knew it was coming. So there was a lot of time preparation i would like to hope that uh, this was uh, israel's way to uh, uh, iran's way to say uh, to the local uh, 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 populace hey jonathan they can't responded uh, we hit this uh, and that's done and we're you know we're finished with our operation and we can move on and let's let's uh, let's keep going i'm hoping this is the case and that this is not some kind of a, a ratcheting up of uh, of the tensions in the region. And I hope that what happened last night, uh, based on what we saw and the incredible uh, uh, ability of Israel to defend itself, that uh, that this was again Iran's way of saying we needed to respond uh, in order to um, you know subdue the the, the, the local population uh, and say that this was our our return, our revenge for what they did to us in, in Damascus. I'm hoping and praying that this is it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And Chris, I think we might have your audio back now. So okay. I wanted to give it another shot. Do we or do we not? I heard you for a second there. I hope we do. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you Good. now. <laughs> I just wanted to add both to uh, Chuck and George, you know, and as Chuck mentioned, having 40,000 people about a stadium size uh, prayer group uh, asking for God's protection. Uh, we prayed later uh, with another maybe 40,000 or more. Uh, and, and I think prayers make a difference. In fact, uh, Ambassador Danone mentioned that in our interview, how, uh, how important it was for people to pray. And I think in not taking anything away from the four-tier technological anti-missile system, which is state-of-the-art. It's just uh, an incredible uh, development. However, there's a spiritual Iron Dome as well, and not to underestimate the power of prayer and how God protected Israel last night. Yeah, it's just the latest in the chapter, guys. I mean, we've seen it. You, you all obviously have reported on it many times, the history of Israel, recent history here, and just the protection that oftentimes defies logical, worldly, earthly explanation and how this place is still standing after all this. It leaves you kind of scratching your head saying, well, I, there really, what other possible explanation could there be for this? So guys, I appreciate all your insights today. Why don't we close this thing out in prayer? Uh, I'll, I'll kick it off. Anybody else wants to chime in? Great. And then, uh, and then we can close it up. So uh, let me do that. And, and I also thank you all for being here on the stream with us, 20,000 of you. It's fantastic, uh, but I hope you all, after this stream, can get yourselves to church and, and get yourselves to worship the Lord. So let's go before him on this stream and, and, uh, and mm -hmm. pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for your sovereignty, for your, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy on us. And we just thank you for all the times that you make yourself known to uh, your creation and to your people. So uh, we're thankful for all the ways you work through us and in us. And um, and we pray, Lord, that in the midst of this situation, that uh, your name would be made great. That's the continual prayer that we have, that people would be drawn to you, that ultimately souls would be saved. And so we lift up that request some more in your name, Jesus. Mm. Lord God, Father, uh, I also promise in your word that you, you have not given us a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've given us a spirit of we sonship got it now. by which we cry Abba, Father. And I just pray that more people inside Israel and out listening to this, this video stream right now would do just that today, would cry out, Abba, Father, and would be heard by you, and you would save them and be their God. We thank you for your promises to Israel, and through Israel, your promises to the whole world. We thank you for your promise that Israel will not be destroyed that we can be confident in you. And I just mm -hmm. pray against the spirit of fear, Lord. I, I pray against that spirit uh, that that people can get so worried about events that are happening around the world. We know that you are in control. We trust you. And we know, because we know your heart, because we know who you are, uh, you've given us a spirit of power and love and self-control. And so I pray that we would display that today and that people would see that peace that we have going forward and they would want what we have in Jesus' name. Father, we also rejoice at what happened last night. We thank you for that. And we pray right now for wisdom for Israel's military and political leaders what to do. Uh, they need wisdom from above, and so we just pray for that wisdom. And we pray that you would continue to watch over Israel. And Father, we pray for each and every one watching and listening right now. Uh, you said in your word, Jesus, that uh, when these things happen, to lift up for your redemption draweth nigh. So Lord, we pray for that grace to keep us fixed on you. You're the author and the finisher of our faith and put our, help us all put our trust in you, in Jesus' name. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I pray for that spirit of freedom uh, to canvas uh, that in the midst of this very challenging moment, uh, that uh, people would rise up, uh, who not just politically, but also spiritually, and be able to put their trust in you, Father. Thank you for the hedge of protection over the nation.
destruction of Israel last night. Uh, clearly, your hand was uh, was evident, uh, and uh, Lord, you protected uh, the people, you protected the entire country in an incredible way, and we thank you for that, Lord. We just pray that there's a convulsion. We've been reporting on it for quite some time. There's a convulsion, a spiritual that's taking place across the uh, across the Middle East, Lord, from the desert sands of uh, Casablanca all the way to Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, Lord. There's just this yearning for freedom, and Lord, when these countries with their dictatorial regimes decide to do things that bring so much pain uh, to innocent people, to the civilian population, uh, Lord, there uh, tends to be just this uh, agony and this yearning for freedom, for this yearning for peace, and I pray that, uh, Lord, today in Iran, that you would continue to move powerfully like you are uh, in Iran, uh, and that uh, more and more people will continue to see dreams and visions of you, Lord. And even with mm -hmm. leadership in Iran or Hezbollah or, or Hamas, Lord, we just know nobody is out of the reach of your love and your grace. And we pray for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you all watching. And if you haven't subscribed to CBN on YouTube and all the other channels, go ahead and do that now. Uh, we greatly value and appreciate the fact that you are with us and you're praying with us and you're supporting us, keeping George and Chuck and Chris out in the field doing their reporting, these great reports and this information that you get can't be done without your help. So we're so thankful for uh, each of you uh, walking alongside of us and supporting us in this uh, effort to bring uh, news from a Christian perspective around the globe. So appreciate you all. Go enjoy the Lord's Day. Chris, stay safe there in Israel. Chuck, George, thanks so much for being here. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. All right. God bless everyone. Take care.